Afternoon guys, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School, uh, back with another Journal of the Yurt. I wanted to discuss the medicinal values of chaga, making chaga tea and things of that nature with you today a little bit. Um, pretty simple process, any infusion is a simple process, you just need to steep or boil depending on what you're trying to do. And the difference between a steep and a boil is you heat the water up or boil the water, set it off to the side, put your ingredients in, cover it with something and let it simmer basically and steep that is steeping if you're going to boil it obviously you just put the ingredients in and boil it at the same time now with chaga um, I wrote some notes down here for you guys because I wanted to make sure that I covered this fairly thoroughly with you now there's going to be a lot of folk remedies and things like that that are out there that people are going to have but as far as the research and the clinical and medicinal research goes um, of chaga you know from what I've read it is the highest antioxidant in nature and antioxidants basically are substances that protect cells from damage um, from unstable molecules so things like tumors are said to be controlled with chaga or said to be attacked by chaga or keep from forming by chaga um, that's one of the big things that people talk about with chaga is it's anti-tumor anti-cancer properties and to obtain those type properties, the chemical in chaga that you need to obtain, you have to either boil it for 20 minutes from what I've read, or you have to make a tincture in alcohol. We've talked about making tinctures before in past videos when we talked about herbalism. Um, to make a tincture, you need to make an alcohol suspension and let it sit for a week or two in alcohol. Basically, you would grind up the chaga to a powder, fill up a non-clear bottle made of glass uh, preferably like a brown color like a beer bottle uh, you'd fill it partially up with chaga and then you would just cover that with alcohol to where it just covered the powder that you have at the bottom and you let it sit in a cool dark place for a week at the end of that time you would strain it off and you would have a tincture that was suspended in alcohol and that would be a further concentrated uh, form of chaga for, me for medicinal purposes like tumors or cancer treatments things like that um, <clears throat> it also is an immune system booster. It's an antiviral, and it's been shown in clinical studies to attack the influenza virus 1 and 2. So it's very good for flu-type symptoms as well. So anything, you know, above the neck type symptoms like stuffy head, cold, flu, um, run down, things like that, those are all going to be good medicinal uses for chaga. Also, um, it's been shown clinically to reduce blood pressure. So that's a good use for chaga as well if you have blood pressure problems or even maybe if you're just eating a lot of pork like I do here in the yurt and out on the trail if you're eating a lot of pork side and things like that that are high in cholesterol or eggs um, drinking chaga tea can help control that cholesterol in clinical tests it will help control cholesterol I'm not trying to give you guys medical advice here whatsoever I'm telling you what research I have done so what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how I process chaga to make a tea um, chaga is Ancient medicine. Chaga has been around and used for thousands of years. Otsi the Iceman was found to have a form of chaga on his person. Presumably that was for both medicinal purposes as well as fire starting purposes, but you can only speculate that. Obviously you're not going to talk to the man and ask him. But because it's useful for both, they assume that it was used for both. He also had charcoal in his pouch, which is another good medicinal um, use item that you can come up with very easily if you just have a fire. So, with all of that said, um, what I want to do now is, what I've done, because I've got the convenience of the yurt, is I just have a normal, like a nutmeg scraper here that you can keep your nutmeg or your garlic or whatever in the top of it, and then you can scrape it, and what comes out the bottom will be powder. And I can take dried chaga that I have here, and I can do that and just powder it down and then put it into my drink and let it steep for a little while as a tea or boil it depending on what I'm trying to get out of the tea and how many um, antioxidants and how much chemical value I'm trying to produce from this chaga. For me, I'm just trying to get a good immune boosting type tea out of it. So all I really want to do is steep it. I don't need to boil it. I'm not trying for, you know, some type of a anti-tumor type situation. All I want to do is steep it and make tea. That's the quickest, easiest way to do it. So that's what we're going to do today. Stay with me, guys. Okay, guys, I zoomed in on this a little bit for you. Like I said, not that major of a situation. I'm just going to take some dried chaga here and I'm going to make sure I got a fairly clean surface here. And I'm just going to scrape it like this. I 
all I'm trying to do is effectively make a powder here. How much chaga you use is kind of up to you. Um, I'll try to use about a teaspoon of chaga to about six ounces of water. Now, I probably won't worry about straining this off because I'm using a dust, but I can easily encapsulate this in something like a piece of, you can see I've got it right there, there's a nice little pile of it right there, pretty close to a teaspoon sized pile. I'll have to get just a little bit more there. And because I'm using the dust, it's not that big a deal for me to drink it. Not like I'm putting a big chunk in there or a bunch of chunks in there. You can strain this through some kind of a cloth, you know, like a drive-on rag or a cotton bandana, whatever the case may be. So now I'm just going to wait for my water to heat up on my wood stove over here. And as soon as it gets hot, I'm going to add my chaga to it, mix it up. I'll probably add a little bit of uh, organic honey into it for flavor and shoot her down. Okay, guys. We got our water ready here. I'm going to go ahead and scrape some of the stuff up into my water real quick here. And we should be set. Yeah. That's a little bit hotter than I want to handle it at the moment, so do it like this. Smells good. It's got a very aromatic smell to it. Um, you burn this stuff for incense too. I mean, it actually does smell really, really good. Let's mix this up. Yeah. Got a little bit of a woody smell to it, but it does smell very, very good. Throw a little bit of honey in here while the water's getting hot. I like to take about a tablespoon of honey every day anyway. So this just makes it double duty. All right. Pour just a little bit more cool water in there to cool it down a little bit. Just like that. Let her sit for a few minutes here. And we'll be ready to go. All right, guys, let's see what we got here. nothing wrong with that at all. A little sweet flavor to it, a little woody, nutty kind of flavor from that chaga. It's good stuff. A cup a day helps keep the doctor away. Well, I appreciate you guys joining me for this Journal of the Yurt on some of the medicinal uses of chaga. I hope I covered most things with you guys. If I didn't, I'll try to answer them on the video. Um, I had to do a lot of research on chaga myself to make sure I was getting the right information. Um, and chaga doesn't grow here in Ohio, so it was new to me, but it's a very good multi-use resource, and uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope you're enjoying this series. I thank you for your support. I thank you for everything that you do for my family, for my business, and for me, and I'll be back with another video just as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.